Now we're going to be multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. This is lesson 7c. And of course, there's going to be links in the description for any videos that you need. Multiplying fractions are easier than adding or subtracting them because it doesn't matter if their denominators are different. We don't care. When we multiply fractions, we just multiply the numerators straight across. We multiply the denominators straight across and then reduce if we have to. If we have one-half times one-third, we multiply one times one straight across and get a one, and the two times three straight across and get a six. It's that easy. If we have three-eighths times two-thirds, we multiply the three times two straight across and get a six. We multiply the eight times three straight across and get a 24. Now this needs to be reduced. We find the biggest number that will fit the 6 and the 24, the biggest multiple. And 6 would be a good one. We could use 2, but then we'll reduce and reduce and reduce. So if we use 6, we'll do 6 divided by 6 and 24 divided by 6. It has to be the same number. And this is a 1, and that's a 4. We get 1 fourth. See? So you're going to learn lots of shortcuts in this video. Hopefully it will be very helpful to you. If we need to find a fraction of something, that's a portion, we can find it by multiplying by that fraction. So Bob needs one-third of Dave's, Dave's seven-eighths yard of rope. And Dave has seven-eighths yards of rope. Bob needs a third of it. We need to find one-third of seven-eighths. So we multiply it. When you see this of, it means multiply. Multiply that fraction by that fraction. That of is taking the place of that big, huge multiplication x. Okay, so we have one third times seven eighths. We just go straight across numerator is seven, straight across denominator is a twenty-four. One third of seven eighths is seven twenty-fourths. Isn't that easy? How about this one? There was two thirds gallon of milk left in the container. Lisa drank half of it. So the it is that two thirds gallon. She drank half of the two thirds. What portion of the gallon did Lisa drink? We do the two-thirds times the half, and see there's a half. We do the two times one straight across and get a two. We do the three times two straight across denominator and get a six. This needs to be reduced. We can divide them both by a two and get a one-third gallon. So Lisa drank one-third of a gallon. Now, you have to be aware of word problems that hide important numbers as words like this one. She drank half. We needed to turn it into a number form as a fraction, see? So be careful of those on the test, okay? A quick way to multiply fractions while reducing at the same time is to use cross-canceling. This is my favorite. If we have 5, 6 times 2 thirds, well, we could do the 5 times 2 is 10 and the 6 times 3 is 18 and then divide them both by 2 and get a 5 ninths. Or we could go much quicker and just do cross-canceling. And what we're doing is we're seeing that the 2 is a 2 times 1 and the 6 is a 2 times 3. So they have a 2 in common, don't they? So we take the 3 and we take the 1. We say how many times can 2 go into 6? 3. And it goes into 2 one time. So we cross the 6 out and make it a 3. We cross the 2 out and make it a 1 because there's 1 2 in 2 and 3 2s in 6. It becomes a 1 and a 3. Now we do 5 times 1 and 3 times 3. That's not a 6 anymore. That's not a 2 anymore. See? And now it goes to 5 ninths. And we can do this very quickly. We really don't need to do this. I just did this to make it easier on your eyes. But we save ourselves a step. And if that means we save 15 or 30 seconds on the GED test, that's more time to do another problem. All right? So here we'll do it again. Here's the slow way, and you'll see what I mean. We have 7 ninths times 3 fourteenths. We do 7 times 3 is 21. We get our calculator and do 9 times 14. We see it's 126. We have to find a number that goes into 21 and 126. So we try a 7, because we know 3 times 7 is 21. So... 21 divided by 7 is a 3, and we do 126 divided by 7 and find out we get an 18. Well, 
this needs to be reduced some more because 3 can fit into 18. So we do 3 divided by 3 and 18 divided by 3, and we finally get a 1 6. So we added a couple extra steps. If we had done cross canceling, we could have looked at this and said, well, look, we have a 7 and a 14. There's 1 7 in 7 and 2 7s in 14. So we can cross this out and make it a 1 and cross the 14 out and make it a 2. And we could do the same thing going this direction with the 3 and the 9. There's one three and three, and there's three threes and nine. See? Now we do one times one is one, and three times two is six, and by cross-canceling, we didn't have to do all this reducing. We went straight to the answer. See? But it has to be crisscross, okay? It's got to be going from numerator to denominator and from denominator to numerator. You can't cross-cancel out straight across. It's got that's why it's called cross-canceling, okay? It's got to be the cross numbers, numerator to denominator, and denominator to numerator. See? You just find out how many of these are in this. There's one of these. There's one three and a three. There's three threes and a nine. So that gets canceled out as a one, and that be gets canceled out and becomes a three. See? That get can gets canceled out because there's one seven, and there's two sevens. So we cancel them out. See? Now this is really, really, really important. To multiply mixed numbers, you have to change them to improper fractions first. You cannot multiply the fractions, then multiply the whole numbers, and put them together. It will not work, and you will get the wrong answer. And I bet you anything those tricky GED people will have one of those wrong answers as a possible choice. So you'll think, oh, look, the answer is there, and you'll mark it, and it won't be the right answer because they tricked you. Always change your mixed numbers into improper fractions before you multiply, all right? So we have 2 and 1 tenth times 1 and 2 sevenths. We know we can change it to an improper fraction by multiplying the whole number to the denominator, 2 times 10 is 20, plus the 1 numerator. So we have 21 tenths. This is 1 times 7 is 7, plus 2 is 9 sevenths. Now we can multiply it. Okay, we can do how many sevens are in a seven? There's one, so we cross this out as a one. And how many sevens are in 21? There's three, so we cross the 21 out as a three. And the nine and the 10 don't have any factors in common. So we're just gonna go with this. And we have three times nine is 27, and 10 times one is 10, and you have to remember that fractions are little division problems. This is basically saying 27 divided by 10. So how many tens are in 27? Two. We can pull out a 10 tenth and then another 10 tenth and have a 7 tenths left over. That's one whole. That's another whole. So that's two whole and the 7 tenths. You can also do it the long division way and do 10 goes into 27 two times. 10 times 2 is 20. We do our subtraction, get the 7. And if you remember from my previous videos on uh, long division of 1, 2, 3 digit divisors, this is the numerator and that is the denominator. See? 7 tenths. The remainder is the numerator and the divisor is the denominator. Okay? But you also can look at it this way. All right? Okay. Now, we can find a fractional part of a whole number. Any whole number can be written as a fraction by giving it a denominator of 1. So 2 over 1 means 2 whole. 99 over 1 means 99 whole. 863 over 1 is 863. It's just a way of making a whole number into a fraction. Just put a 1 underneath it as a denominator. So here's our problem. It says 1 fourth of 300 people. So we need to find 1 fourth of 300 over 1. So the of is telling us to multiply. So we can put this with a 1 as a denominator to turn it into a fraction. And we can either go straight across and do 1 times 300 is 300. 4 times 1 is 4. And this needs to be reduced. How many 4s go into 300? It's 300 divided by 4. We can do it the long division way and come up with a 75, or we could divide both of these by 4 with our calculator and get a 75 over a 1, which is a 75. 1 fourth of 300 is 75, because 75 times 4 is 300. We also could have done it this way. We could have said 300 divided by 4 is 75, 
So we cross this out and make it a 75, and we cross this out as a 1. There's 1, 4, and 4. There's 75, 4 is in 300. And now, if we multiply straight across, we get 75 over 1, which is 75. See? Now let me show you these. It says find 3 eighths of 5 and a half. So we need to turn this into an improper fraction. It means 3 eighths times this improper fraction. We do 5 times 2 is 10, plus the 1 is 11. And we use that denominator, 11 halves. So now we have 3 eighths of 11 halves. We turn that of into a multiplication sign. And I don't see any factors, any common factors here. So we're just going to do 3 times 11 is 33 over 8 times 2 is 16. And this is 33 divided by 16. How many 16s are in 33? Well, 16 plus 16 is 32. So there's two of them. And it's going to leave a 1 16th left over. Okay. And I know this can be rough. What is 5 sevenths of 49? So that means we can turn this into a fraction by putting a 1 as a denominator, and we can turn that into a, a big X for times table, right? So now we've got 5 sevenths of 49 over 1, and look, 7 and 49, this is why it's really important to know your multiplication tables. If you know your multiplication tables, you know right away that 7 times 7 is 49. So we've got some factors here. And 7 times 1 is 7, and 7 times 7 is 49, so this can be cross-canceled out as a 1 and that as a 7. Now we can just multiply 5 times 7 is 35 over 1, we get a 35. See? Knowing your multiplication tables and doing the cross-canceling and knowing your multiples and factors and stuff are really going to help you. Okay? Let's look at this one. Lisa paints one-third of a room in an hour. How many rooms will she paint in six hours? So we need one-third of six. So we can write it as one-third times six over one. Turn that six into a fraction. The three and six, we can cross the three out as a one and the six out as a two. There's two threes in here and there's one three in here. See? Now we can just do one times two is two and one times one is one. That's two rooms. So basically, this is what we did with this problem. She did one-third of a room in an hour. So that means that's one hour, right? There's another hour, and there's another hour, and we now have three-thirds, and it's three hours. So she did one room in three hours, but it's asking us six hours. So if we do it again... Then we'll have six hours, and we'll have another three-thirds. So that's one room, two rooms, in six hours. But for the sake of solving time, of saving time on the test, it's a lot faster to multiply one-third times six. You'll get your answer much quicker and have more time. Multiplication is just repeated addition. It's the same thing. So if you look at this as multiplication and not addition, you'll, you're going to go quicker. Okay? So now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 93. And I hope you do well. If you have a problem, watch this video again. It's no big deal. It's just a few minutes out of your life, but it's going to guarantee you success. And remember that a fraction followed by the word of means to multiply. So if you see one half of one third, it means one half times one third. Okay? She had half of a third yard of fabric. Well, you multiply one half times one third. All right? Our next video is going to be dividing fractions and mixed numbers. So make sure you understand this before you move on to the next lesson, okay? If you need more help, there's lots of links in this description. All of Chapter 7 for Grade 5 is going to be helpful. But these Grade 4 math videos are going to be helpful. They're all about multiplying fractions. And these Grade 6 math videos are all about multiplying fractions, okay? And I'll have the previous ones for this le lesson, 7a and 7b, linked in there too, okay? So now that we're getting into these fractions, now it's very important that you take your time and go slowly and make sure you understand each lesson before you proceed because you don't want to become frustrated and get in over your head, okay? Okay, good luck on that skill focus, and I'll see you next lesson. Bye.